Hey, hey, and welcome to this episode of Connections, Coffee, and Confidence with me, Janice. Have you ever had someone compliment you on something that just comes naturally to you? Something that you don't even think that much about? Something that, frankly, drives other people absolutely bloody bonkers, but it's appreciated and valued by others? This happened to me recently, and it got me to thinking about how this skill is something so valuable to each of us as communicators, as people with messages to deliver, goals to achieve, and most importantly, relationships to snuggle into. And that skill is what today's episode is all about. Hi, I'm Janice Fogarty, and I'm a communications strategist and consultant. The Connections Coffee Confidence Podcast is for professional women entrepreneurs who have established themselves and their business, and they're ready to get serious about using the power of communication to surpass their business goals. On this podcast, I discuss everything from leadership to establishing a business vision to the intricacies of creating messaging, publicity, and more. I speak to women who excel in communications in their business, whatever they do and get an inside look at how they created a thriving livelihood. So top up your mug and welcome to this week's episode. I think one of the nicest compliments I've ever gotten was a very unexpected one, made almost in an offhand kind of way about a year ago as part of a conversation in a small group of businesswomen. A version of it was repeated recently at a soiree. <laughs> Who am I kidding? It was at a makeup version of Beer Fest because the real one got cancelled due to, well, what else? The business conversation compliment was about emails. One of the women is on my email list, JaniceFogarty.com by the way, and she said she loves my emails and wishes she could write like me. My heart welled up because I love writing those emails and email writing is not always a validating process. The beer fest one was, well, you may not believe this, but I tend to be rather introverted. I'm not really the life of the party. However, I was into trying the beers. It was a lovely group of people that I'm pretty comfortable with, and so I was feeling a bit more free. I was in the middle of telling probably my second story, and I overheard someone say to someone else that I'm a good storyteller. I don't know if I was supposed to overhear it, and I couldn't break my flow or I'd never remember what I was saying, but again, my heart, my heart was so happy. Stories are essential to communications. They have long played a part of cultures retaining their knowledge and history, of dreaming and growing. Stories endear you to some and invoke unpleasant reactions in others. Stories are essential to us as humans, but also to us as communicators, as as business owners. Oh, wait a minute, Jan, I hear you say. Because we're friends, and sometimes our friends call me that. Yeah, I'm not a storyteller. I'm an accountant. I'm a dog trainer. I'm a cleaner. I'm a person who does what I do, because it means I don't need to interact with people. You're supposed to tell me how to make my point and get my sales, not this fairy tale baloney. To which I say, yeah, storytelling is a part of that. And here's how. First, stories are ways that societies across the ages and the globe have kept their cultures alive, literally and figuratively. If you had an ancient culture who lived near a volcano, you had better believe that stories about the last time that volcano erupted were were told and retold through the generations as a reminder of what happened, what the warning signs were, and probably evolved to include what the better options are in case it happens again. Many fairy tales were written as a means to impart information, to shape our thoughts about certain issues such as, life is hard, so prepare to work hard, don't be greedy, or Don't trust what looks like an amazing treat because a witch might try to turn you into dinner. And oh my gosh, that is so loaded. I can't even begin. So let's just skim the surface of that one here, please. 
bring that up to modern day where we continue to tell our children stories in an effort to keep them safe or make them aware. One industry is taking this tactic and using it to its advantage, and that's the health and safety industry. The American Center for Disease Control, or the CDC, published a brilliant eight-page article, which I am linking in the show notes, based off of some research that they did on safety training in mining companies. The end result was that stories were considered an excellent way to impart information, not just to new hires, but also to people who have been around a while. And if you read the article, it highlights the different types of stories that can be used to give information. I particularly love what they call the fool stories. You know, well, I once knew a guy who... My husband uses those stories all the time. He has a treasure trove of them from growing up in and around Dublin and the characters he was exposed to there. I suspect that some of them may be autobiographical. But it doesn't actually matter. What matters is the use of a story to impart information. Have you read many sales pages lately? Like for anything? Chances are you've read a customer story about the person who didn't do or didn't use what was being sold and suffered from it. Whatever you feel about the truth of these stories, they are there to impart information designed to influence you and your decision making. And they are a tool for you to use in making your own point. Stories also keep cultures alive in the more figurative sense. Heck, what do you think Facebook and Instagram are built on? In this sense, stories don't only teach skills, but are also a way to relive past victories, to glorify aspects of a culture or society, to remind people of their significance. Sports teams and leagues are really good at this. I am a hockey fan. I'm not a season ticket holder, but I grew up in the culture, and I can tell you I'm a Habs fan, through and through. If you're not into hockey, it means I'm a Montreal Canadiens fan. We won, we won the Stanley Cup, the grand prize of the NHL, more times than any other team in the league. 24 Stanley Cups. But we haven't won since the 1992-93 season. You can do the math. It, it has been a while. And yet, the stories of Jacques Plante, Maurice Rocket Richard, Bernie Boom Boom Jeffreyon, Patrick Waugh, they are legends that are told and retold. We rewatch the black and white fuzzy footage from the club's golden ages and we toast those athletes and the characters when we've been booted from yet another playoff. And maybe none of this means anything to you. And really that doesn't matter because the point is that the stories keep this culture alive. Yes, there are modern legends like Carrie Price to create new stories for our kids to tell, but the culture has been created through the characters that made the stories and those who told and continue to tell them. As a business owner, you may not have won a Stanley Cup, but I bet you have stories about past glories, where your business originated from, what your industry has accomplished or done for the world, or at least your world. And these are tools for you to create your reputation and what about stories as a way of dreaming, of exploring ideas and growth? I don't know how much science fiction or fantasy you've read, but many inventors reference ideas gleaned from those books, those magazines and movies as their inspiration. A computer in tablet form was first seen in Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey from 1968, for example. There are large tech companies who hire science fiction writers to come in and imagine worlds with them, to basically do thought experiments together. And side note, this idea lights me up. Imagine treating dreaming not as a luxury, but a necessary business fact, something you must do to get ahead and create or do bigger and better. Maybe you're not a tech company, but this still applies to you. 
Most often you'll see examples of this dreaming and future planning on sales pages. That's typically the after story. How bananas awesome someone's world is after purchasing the product. It's framed as social proof, but these are stories, true or not, and they're meant to show a future you to the current you. Many of us have visions, inspirations, ideas, and thoughts, and, and those can be stories to influence or inspire or attract your audience, your customers. Along those lines of inspiring or attracting, storytelling is a way of creating relationships, of establishing your reputation and pulling people into your world. This is about the people you listen to, the authors whose books you read, the things you've bought or used. Chances are you've caught their way of telling you something. It landed with you. That way probably involved a story and you identified with that story or at least an aspect of it. It helped you form an impression of whether this was a company or a brand you want to associate with and to support. Research shows this to be especially impactful if you're working with or want to work with millennials. They're attuned to corporate values and activities that reflect those values, but the rest of us are partial to familiarity with a brand as well. It makes us happy to buy something from someone we feel we know and trust. They've established a reputation with us and that influences our behavior. You can use stories to showcase your values, your activities, your beliefs and your traits. You can tell stories that reflect who you are as a person, what you do as a business owner, to shape how people think about your brand. It's public relations in a most beautiful form. The stories you tell, the way you tell them, these all paint a picture, which reminds me that pictures tell stories too. Have a listen to episode 60, which is all about visual public relations and how it's something we can all so easily work into our daily marketing. I'll link to that in the show notes. Stories are something that are so incredibly useful to use as communicators, because no matter the situation, we're always trying to gather information or impart it on someone else. Stories are a way to make sure your messages reach people, to stick in their heads and to make an impression. They can be a brilliant business tool if you know how to suss them out and use them effectively. So if you want to work on your stories, pop me an email at Janice at JaniceFogarty.com. And if you have stories, but want to practice using them, I suggest you take my Create Your Social Media Content Strategy. Social media is one of the most frequently used ways to tell stories. So why not make sure you're telling yours to your best advantage? And I'll link to both of those in the show notes. And just to wrap this up, I want to say thank you, Susie. And thank you, Jody. I appreciate your kind words and your recognition of something that I worked on as a skill and I do try to use in life. Until next time, my friend, have a fan freaking tastic day. Oh, wait, before you go, if you need someone to hold space for you to write your smarter goals, then join me for a free virtual event on November 10th, where we'll get into the right mindset and create our intentions and set our goals for the new year. To learn more and to register, go to www.janicefogarty.com and look for the goal setting co-working session. Thanks so much for listening this week. I invite you to sign up for my email list or join me in the Connections Coffee and Confidence community on Facebook. Those are the people who get first dibs on any classes or products I create and they benefit from the extras I can't get into in a podcast format. I also lovingly request that if you've enjoyed this podcast, you leave a review on Apple. When I see a new review, I get so excited, I almost spill my cappuccino froth. Almost. And if you're a woman entrepreneur who's ready to get serious about using the power of communications to grow your business, send me an email at Janice at JaniceFogarty.com. All my details are in the show notes. 
Thank you again for listening today, and I'll chat with you again next week.